You're listening to the Storytime Podcast. I'm so excited for this episode. We have Alec Hansen with us today. Um, Alec entered the mortgage industry in 2004. His year, you funded over 85 million that year, right? Your first real yeah. year. Dang. Yeah. Um, he's branch manager of Orange County and in, in funded over 1 billion in 2010. Did I read that right when you said it over? Jeez. And he's the author of Loan Depot's Modern Lending Playbook and Bypassed, a modern guide for local mortgage pros left behind the mortgage or behind the digital customer. Um, Alec, thank you for joining us. I know you're super busy. He's a busy man. So today we're going to talk about how you can create consistent content that is still authentic. And I think this is so needed for loan officers and real estate agents because you have to sure. constantly be creating content. Um, let's just start off with that question. You you create a lot of content, man. Every piece of content has your face on it. Um, I haven't seen a lot of stock stuff. How do you continue to build authentic content for your audience that doesn't feel stock heavy? I, I think it's a journey, you know, bro. I mean, it starts with figuring out what you want your voice to be. It starts with finding and reconnecting to your passion because a lot of social media content is all about um, that people post all about themselves. And it's yeah. a huge turnoff. It's always about look at my Yelp review or look at how good I am or I close a loan so fast. And it's just all this like me, me centric stuff. And it really is a huge turnoff. So I think the first thing people have to do is really connect into like, why am I on these platforms? What, what am I trying to accomplish? And, and if it's if it's get leads or get business, you've kind of missed the why. You got to go with another layer deep. Like leads and opportunities are kind of the result. But when you connect into what the why is, not, now your purpose can become clear. And now you can have that motivation to show up even when it's hard and you're tired and you don't want to because you have a reason yeah. to be there that means something to you here. That's so awesome. And, and you mentioned like people, it's all about me, me, me. One thing that I see a lot of just solopreneurs do is they say at the very beginning, they introduce themselves on every single one of the videos. And did you ever, I, I know I did it at like the very beginning when I started content. Did you ever start doing that? Cause like, I think we've all made that mistake, but. Of, of course, of course. And, and I mean, I don't even know how much I, I like judge that anymore. Like, I think it's just part of the journey for a lot of people like to figure out like, I don't know what I'm doing on this space. And, and I, I, obviously my name's like written everywhere. Like they know what I, who's what, who I am. But like in the beginning, you're like, I, you're uncomfortable. You don't know what you don't know. And so I'm kind of I kind of cheer those people on a little bit now because it's it's awesome. They're gonna figure it out, and at least they're playing the game. Dude, I could not agree with you more. I think it, when I see new loan officers posting content, it makes me so happy because at least they're trying it. There's there's so many people that like they're not willing to adapt. And Chris Medean actually he posted a video a couple of weeks ago that says he has never seen more loan officers posting video or real estate agent and being willing to adapt. What does it mean to adapt to this new video content age that we're we have been in, but it's just becoming more and more apparent with SEO and everything? You know, I I, I wish people. Well, I, I'm hoping more people understand why to do it versus everyone just thinking I have to do it and jumping on the bandwagon. And and so there's there's a comment of like, I think people are doing it because somebody's saying go do it, but they're not connecting into why I should be doing it. And once I think they make that connection, they can be much more effective on these platforms. Um, and, th and at the same time, um, there are so many people who have yet to find their authentic voice. And again, this is not a, a slant. It's more of an observation. They, they just sound like everybody else. They, they, they show up, they, they, they look at, like they want, they, they look like a caricature. They're, they're not, they're not real. And, <laughs> and, it's, and, but again, it's all part of the journey. Um, and so I don't want to knock it because I'm happy they're in it, but I want people to be thoughtful about it um, and really understand why they should be in these platforms and what they should be doing. Dude, I really love that you mentioned that. And I think it's good to, to break it down. Like we're all human beings. I think something that we do on social is we treat it like, have you ever heard this phrase? People treat so social media like a billboard. Have you ever heard that before? <laughs> Yes. So that, that's exactly what people do, right? They're like, how can I get a lead? How can I get a sell out of it? But like, that's not how real life works. And once you start to like re-engineer your mind where it's social media is real life, it really is. We're just talking over a computer instead. I think that'll help a bunch. Alec, what's, what's your, cause you talk about your why, like why you're creating your content. Why are you creating so much content? What is your why for, for why you do it? Um, in 2018, when we were having a pretty major, um, 
market crunch, very similar to what's happening right now that, that, you know, we would have had this same experience we're having now in 2018 if COVID hadn't showed up. And so what was, what's happening then was the, 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 the margin compression, there was, there's too many loan officers and companies, not enough loans, and there was hyper, hyper competition. And we had not adapted to modern sales strategies. And what I mean by that is most in market, great loan officers, get all of our business from referral partners. And, and, and by the way, that playbook is still super valid. It's tweaked and changed, but it's still super valid. But all of a sudden, the, the top of the sales funnel had radically changed. And, and for me, it was an aha moment, but it, it wasn't, that's not how the world works. It had been happening for a long time. In 2018, it just hit me in the face that, oh my gosh, consumers, we are an internet first society. We go online at first. We don't call buddies. We don't phone a friend. We don't ask for referrals. We go online first. Now we still do the other things, but because we go online first, now we're making opinions. We're getting influenced. We're submitting our information. We're getting quotes. We're getting picked up by aggregators. And now my biggest fear and my biggest realization was the local in market mortgage guy, the pro, my people, me, we're not at the top of the funnel anymore. We are down the funnel. And that means our side of the story isn't being told. And that's where I got on fire with this. And I started coaching and pushing loan officers into social, using social as a tool for human connection versus a place to post cat memes. And, and then I had this, this moment where I realized as a leader, I wasn't doing any of that. And that really hit me hard because I, I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not a coach in the background. Like I want to be in the, in the mud. I want to be in it with my team. And I went, I'm not doing any of this. And so really in 20, end of 2018, I just was like, I'm going in, I'm going in, I'm going to figure it out. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I, I've learned a lot in three years, but it was more like, I'm going to play the game and figure out what's happening, what, what's working. And I'm going to, then I'm going to coach and lead and be in that space with, with the people. And that is, was the big burning fire for me to get on the platforms and start to tell my story, start to communicate what's going on, start to figure out what the platforms mean so I could be a better leader. Dude, I have like a very similar story. So I was in the more, I got in the mortgage industry, I want to say like 2017, 2018. And I felt that crunch with loan officers, like talking to me, like, what should I do for marketing? Cause they need more marketing. And I kept bringing up video. Maybe you've heard me tell this before, but I kept bringing up video, like, Hey, start doing video. And this loan officer called me out and he's like, have you done video before? I'm like, no. He's like, then you can't be telling us how to do this. If you haven't done it, like, okay. So I, I was like, I'm doing it. And I remember recording that first video and feeling like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like why I know we need to do it, but I can't be telling these guys to do it if I haven't done it first. Like Thank I'm you. on the same track as you. It was, it was kind of a wake up call. It was awkward conversation, but I needed it. And I think a lot of people need it. Like if, if we're going to talk about video, like why and how can you do it? We need to do it ourselves. Um, so I love that story. So as you keep building out content, you have really good content and it's always engaging. How, how do you always keep your content engaging? Cause it's one thing just to re bust out a bunch of video, right? But I would say like most of your content is like very engaging. It's not, it's not boring. It's, it's super like I can engage with that stuff. Well, I, I really believe there's an audience for everyone. And what I mean by that is based on this, the reality that we're all such different people and, and, and have so many different likes and interests across such a broad spectrum that it just would make sense that certain things would resonate with certain groups in different ways. Mm -hmm. So if you look at like my content strategy, um, it's evolved and, and it really is my authentic voice. Like it's silly. Yeah. It has some, it has humor in it. It, it, it it's loud, it's big. Um, yeah. because that's, that's what I enjoy doing. That's, that's, that, that's my purse. That's my expression coming out and presenting. Uh, but that's not everyone's cup of tea. You, trust me, when I was a direct originator, um, engineer minded people really had a hard time working with me because I was so fast, I moved so fast. And they kept being like, hey, you need to slow down, bro. I need to, I need to walk me through the 1003 more. I need, I need to see every line item on the LE. Like I can't be, you know, just glossing over this. I want to come in and sit down and look at disclosures with you. And I was like, oh God, that's my worst nightmare. Only because <laughs> it just takes so much time. So yeah. We all start realizing there's really a, a community or an audience for everybody based on everyone's style, but you got to find, you got to let your style out. Yes. Most are so insecure about their style or who they are that they try to be a caricature of somebody else. Like I said, they try to imitate somebody else. And I'm just kind of sitting here cheering them on being like, look, keep playing. But at some yes. point you got to stop caring what other people think. And you got to let your, your own worldview, your own charisma, your own mind come into the game here. 
and let that shine through. Because what you'll realize, what everyone realizes real quick, Devin, is that there is yeah. an unlimited amount of things to talk about. Yeah, there really is. Having, having something to talk about is not the problem because people go, what do I say? There's a, a, a billion things to say. <clears throat> Lack of content is never the, the issue. <clears throat> the issue is what are you passionate about? What do you care about? And how do you let it out authentically? Dude, so you mentioned about people trying to find their voice um, as you're you're telling everything. And that's like the most common question I get is like, should I be myself or should I be like over eccentric? <laughs> and it's like, no, like be yourself. But I've heard, I've literally heard coaches say like, do not be yourself. Like be this completely different person because you want to be over eccentric, even if you're not. And it's, it's kind of a killer, man, because like, how can you do that? And then you meet that person in video and I mean, in real life, and they're not like that at all. Um, have you, do you have any like stories that you've seen that happen in the past? Cause I know I've seen it like multiple times, but it'd be great to hear, like, even from your, if your own experience, if you've ever seen that. Um, I mean, my best example is my buddy, Neil Dingra, who is a very competent content creator, um, in the middle of doing amazing things. And, and he is very, um, soft-spoken, so to speak, almost when he, when he presents his content, he, he's very intimate with it. Um, it's, it's almost like he's telling you a secret. He's like, he's kind of like leaning in and, and sharing an insight and, and there's no graphic overlays. And, I mean, there's some, there's some words that pop up, but there's no like big clips and intros and outros. And it's just very consistent, relevant information. And you can tell just by his popularity through that, the medium, how many people resonate with that style of authenticity of just who he is. This is, this is his voice. And then yeah. you use, you put me on the other side of the coin and I've got, you know, goofy stuff happening and funny clips happening and things that, 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 that I think are hysterical that maybe no one else does. But the reality is that some, some do. And then that, that, that's drawn into me. And you can respect both sides. And I think that that's just part of the journey of um, – yeah. here's, here's the best way to put it. You talk to any loan officer and you say, have you worked with some customers that really got you, appreciated you? and wanted to work with you. And what was that experience like? And they're like, it was amazing. They respected my time. They, they were happy to work with me. They didn't shop the hell out of me. They understood my value. I said, have you ever worked with a customer who does not care about your value, just beats you over the head every five minutes and threatens to, to take their loan somewhere else every day because your rate's too high and just makes their whole experience a nightmare. And they're like, yes. So don't you want to attract this one? And they're like, mm -hmm. oh yeah. And I'm like, well, that's what an authentic brand, so to speak, or digital reputation will draw in. Those people will be like, I feel I'm into the, I'm, I feel your vibe. They will connect yeah. in and they'll be attracted to you. And the ones that aren't will just self-select out. And this is the best way you can drive the type of business you want is by being your true self. Man, that's so awesome. It's still like, it always just goes back to being <laughs> authentic. Don't try to be someone else because it just goes back to like, you're going to, you're going to see them in real life. It's going to be real awkward if you don't act that same on camera. So uh, that's an awesome story. Star Wars, man. Let's, so there's a lot of ways to create training content. You're a big Star Wars fan. How are you going to use this latest Obi-Wan Kenobi episode to create some good content for mortgage? I have not <laughs> finished it. I have not finished it last. I was watching it last night and I got too oh, tired. Man. I'm like, I got, I want to give it the respect it's due. So I was watching the Vader Obi fight and I was like, I got to pause. I, this is too good. I got to let this thing sit and I'm going to come back to it tonight. So no spoiler alerts for anybody that hasn't seen it yet. It's worth it. Um, but, but I think the best analogy I can draw in with my love of Star Wars and Marvel comics and all things nerd is when you let some of that stuff out and you expose mm -hmm. to the public, the things you're interested in, and I don't mean your deep, dark family secrets and shit going on, but like, you know, if you're a dog person or a cat person or you like video games or you're a, a, a ultra marathon runner or you bike all the time with a crew, like whatever, whatever it is that you kind of that, that keeps you alive, that you love. When you start letting that stuff out and sharing it, you become so much less of a billboard and so much more of a human. And that is all human connection opportunity. That is all the chance for someone to be like, dude, I dig that stuff, too. And like you even see in my content, I put on tons of costumes and I'm goofing around with a bunch of comic book stuff because it's it's what I love. Um, and then the people that love it too, we have an instant connection. Yeah. So it's that kind of like, you got to let that stuff out. You let people see it because it humanizes you. It creates connectivity. And that's the power of relationships and humans. When you connect, that's who you want to work with. 
Dude, I, I love your content so much, especially because I'm a Star Wars fan. So I had to bring it up because it's a thing too. like think of like when Facebook was created or any social channels because we were trying to connect with other people we already knew or we didn't know at the very beginning. Like maybe I missed it, but there wasn't anything like educational content. And then we get into this education phase where like you get SEO built in with TikTok and everything. But at the very beginning, it was literally just like, how's your day going? Like, what are you doing? And I think people forget that there's still like this personal element that people care more about the personalized approach than just the educational content. So you layering that in is huge. Um, is there any tips or like tactics you have for someone that's just getting started creating a video, how to make that maybe you already asked about it, how to make it feel authentic? Mm. Um, like what was, I mean, I don't think I asked it actually, what were your steps when you first started? Like were there action items you took? Yeah. And uh, make sure you remind me, Devin, I want to go back and talk about the, the two way street here because there's putting okay. out content, but then there's how do you grow your community? And, and they're two different okay. things. And I want to make sure we hit both. Okay. Um, but I'll tell you what I did in the beginning was I threw up a Google Drive doc, you know, an Excel doc on Google Drive. And I just said, mm -hmm. what topics do I know? And mm -hmm. I listed them out. I kind of put on like, you know, sales stories from my past origination career, yeah. um, leadership situations and stories and experiences that I've got, um, things that I think would be helpful to people like tactically, like how to use a camera and how to set up, like just the things that I thought would be kind of useful. And I, I just started listing out items. And because I had gotten my first commitment into this space was I wanted to do 100 videos in 100 days. I remember that. No, yes. was it, well, I couldn't remember if it was you, it was LinkedIn, right? Yeah, I think it was I on you LinkedIn, like Facebook. I'm like, I'm going to do a hundred videos in a hundred yes. days. And before I even put the camera on and, and used, and I filmed it all on my phone. So before I even turned weird. the camera on, I, I built this document and within a probably 30, 45 minutes, I'd put down like 35, 40 topics, you know? Dang. And I was like, dude, done, done. I'm going to crush this thing because I've already got 40 topics up. And then what I would do is every Monday I had, four or five different t-shirts on a clothing rack in my office. And I'd, I'd put my camera on a little tripod and I would film one of the videos on one of the topics. And then I'd change my shirt and I'd film the next one. And so that that whole week, all my content was done, right? It was all ready to be posted. I, didn't, I, I filmed it all in one sitting. So I didn't have to like wake up the next day and be like, crap, I got to film a video. And that's when I realized there's unlimited pieces of things to talk about because yeah. I just, you, you realize you can talk about stuff forever. And Plus, no one really listens, so you can repeat. That's a little pro tip later we can talk about. Um, and then I, I started to find some fun apps that could add in some cuts and insert some movie quotes and have some fun with it. Yeah. And I, I just I got more comfortable on camera. And so, Devin, the biggest thing anyone that has to realize is that video matters. It's huge. Yeah. It's a huge, unbelievable medium for human connection. You can't just yeah. ignore it. And second, to be comfortable in it, you need repetitions. Like you need yeah. reps. Right. Of course you do. Like anything else. Like you want to shoot free throws well, you go shoot 10,000 free throws. So yeah. you want to get comfortable on camera? Go do 10,000 videos. And everyone's like, oh, that's too much. But like that's the game. You got to put in repetitions and you'll get a lot better. So, and I want to remind you about what you brought up. But you, was it, did you read Atomic Habits? Is that uh, what no. the book you know, was it Dave? I thought it was you. Okay. Then never mind. I was going to breed up atomic habits. I thought it was you, but there's, there's four ha things you can do to make a habit easy. And it's make it obvious, make it easy, make it attractive and make it satisfying. So I think like making it obvious is set an alarm every Monday or every Sunday say, Hey, I'm going to record five videos tomorrow. Don't forget to do this because I use that too. Like I, I tell loan officers, either set an alarm every day or set it every week, whatever works better for you, how you create content better. But I have, I'm, I'm interested because this has helped me. Um, I'll start getting in a video session because I try to do it once a week. My first couple of videos are a little off and I start to warm up like how you would in sports. Of course. Right? Like you got to go to a basketball game. Do you think, is that how it works for you too? Or am I crazy? <laughs> no, no, no. In, in the beginning, it, you, reps warm you up for sure. And then like now, like I, I don't, I don't need a warm up session. Like just go like I'm, I'm yeah. now way more comfortable and it's like because i've done it so many times now that it's like let's just rock and roll so yeah. but but yeah in the beginning yeah you might have to film a thing like three or four times and you're finally like okay i'm in a groove now i feel like yeah. I, I can i'm not I'm, I'm literate now i can say things 
and don't just fall over. But yes, dude, it's total, totally part of the process. That's awesome. And I think too, um, cause you mentioned like it's, it's stuff you already know. So just imagine someone's asking that question. And I think something that has helped when I, when we're helping people create video content is ask like your friend to ask you a question like they would as a borrower and just answer that question. You don't even have to look at the camera, just answer that person. And that's going to help because now you're not thinking too much into it. Um, you told me to bring this back up, how to put out content and how to grow your community. Um, if you want to go back into that. Yeah, I was, I was sitting with a really great friend the other day and he goes, he, he just finally dove all in. He's making great content. He's putting out videos. And so we're having margaritas and he's like, hey, how do I, how do I get more, build my following, right? And I think a lot of loan officers or anybody in general digging into the space is like, I get more followers by creating more videos. And I'm like, kind of. Like, but you're not going viral. Let's just call it like it is. Like, you're not going viral. One video is not going to be like, oh my God, I made it. Like, that's not how the world works. If you want to grow your community, you got to go find them and you've got to go connect to them yourself. And so I, I talk about this concept called ICE, identify, connect, and engage. And it's so crucially important to building a digital community that has meaning, but it's the but it's hard work. It's actually harder than making videos once you actually get in the, the rhythm of videos, it's harder to go out and go, okay, well, who do I want to connect with? Well, go get your past customers and go get the top 150 realtors in your marketplace. Take that list of your thousand past customers and the 150 realtors and go freaking find them on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram and follow them and connect with them. Yeah. But like do five a day. And now, now that becomes grindy and effortful, but like you can see the end result, right? Like the end result is, Everyone that you want to hear your message is now in a place where they can actually hear it. Hey, Alec, I want to ask you a question. I don't mean to cut you off, but like, I really want to know this because it's going to help me. So I've been, I've been doing that. I've been setting more video content than I ever have. Like I'll, I'll engage with someone on LinkedIn or Instagram and I don't want to do a sell. I just want to introduce myself because like mm -hmm. no one wants to hear a sell on social media. Have you ever tried like recording a video, sending it to someone? And like, do you have any like tips to make those videos get a response back because of like maybe 40 percent on responses yeah I, I think this is my strategy and again it fits my personality and again everyone wants to be sold the way they want to be sold so there's different ways because Devin, some people will respect the hustle of it's a true. direct solicitation hard, right? yeah, yeah so, some people that like that themselves will say like dude i like somebody who's willing to to have the guts yeah. to just come right at me and be like, I want to work with you. I love what your content is doing. What, let's like, I, let's talk about it. Can I get an appointment with you? And yeah. some people are like, yes, I like that person. I don't like that person. I yeah. feel like it's my space. Don't come into my space. You don't have permission. You don't know me. Don't solicit me cold. So right. everyone's got their own angle and I'll, and I'll share mine. So if I'm going after you to recruit you to Loan Depot, or if I'm going after you to get your business as a realtor, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to find you on these platforms and I'm going to follow you. And as I, and I'm going to watch your activity and I'm, as I'm watching your activity, when stuff resonates with me, I'm going to engage and I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, a comment, a, a, a high five, not just a like and an emoji, but like a real, like, dude, you're crushing it. Or this was impressive. I, I, that actually helped me in this situation, a, a real engagement. And yeah. over time, that engagement builds a connection between you and me. Yep. And I'm not selling you. I'm not asking you for an appointment. I'm not putting myself out there. And at the same time I'm doing that, I'm going to show up with my message and my content. And I'm going to let you, and you're going to see it over time because I'm going to be consistent and diligent. And you're going to get an impression of me over time. Even if you're not even watching my videos and you're just scrolling by yep. them, you're going to see my face. You're going to see my hustle. You're going to see what I believe. And then as that relationship builds, I now I'm in a place where I can, I can reach out appropriately with what I call with permission and, and ask for either an appointment, a time to connect. Maybe they're going to go to an event and I'm going to an event and I say, Hey dude, it'd be great to see you there. And I hunt them down there and I introduce myself. That's how I like to be prospected. Like I get yeah. cold LinkedIn DMS all day long. And the whole time I'm thinking is dude, just slow the roll. I'm not marrying you yet. You want, yeah. you want to work with me? Start showing me what you're about. Start yep. showing me what you're about. That's what I'm thinking every day. Start showing me what you're about every day. I'll see it. I'll look. Yeah. And if I like it and if I'm into it, we got a chance. Dude, and that's, I love that. Again, styles, but like you got to find yours and you got to commit to it. 
Did so did did Chris Chris Medine, did he ever tell you how me and him met? Hmm. So we were he was on Instagram and he's in Utah and he posted a video and he said it's impossible to find an Uber in Utah. Guys, it really oh, is he impossible didn't to find it. So I messaged him on Instagram, but like that was it was cool because like I was engaging with his stuff. Yeah. But I love those stories because it's like at the perfect time, like just wait for the perfect moment. It doesn't have to be right off the bat, like you mentioned, like engage with that stuff. Because I bet if I miss messaged Chris, like when he wasn't in Utah, I'd be like, screw this guy. Like, why is he trying to get my business? You know, but I love that you talk about it's a slow roll, engage with their content, wait for those perfect moments. Um, and I appreciate and show me and show me what you're about during that yes. whole time. Yep. Like show me your stuff. Show me how excited you yeah. are. Put out content. I want to see it. Yeah. How, Alec, I don't even remember. How did we be? It was, it was I swear it was through social. But oh, definitely through social. A hundred percent. Yeah. Dude, mutual yeah, mutual social 100. connections. Yeah, huh? it was the video to 100. It was the, when you're doing the video to 100. That's how I remember you. And I didn't remember it was that, but I remember, like, that's insane. I don't know. It's wild, man, how, how far back it goes. Um, I feel like we're going on a, a good rift with this video content and making sure people, like, feel authentic, like, engaged, don't feel like another prospect. Because I do agree there's some, like, people that are, like, they love the hustle. But I, I don't know. This is just my opinion. What do you think? I feel like more people don't, like the hustle as much as people would you rather engage with their posts first but what are your thoughts on it yeah um I, I think you can grow your business dramatically never posting a video but being authentically engaged and curious and into other people and and so even without posting a video i think that if you're following key realtors around key partners and you're engaged commenting high-fiving not like a creep every five seconds they post and you're already there immediately you know, you know not like a, like but like a good normal person yeah. um i think you can build a lot of reputation and a lot of connection without even posting your own message uh but that said people we're, we're such instant gratification monsters we don't yeah. understand let me reframe that we do understand that hard work and consistency gets us our result we know this in our hearts in our souls but then we act as if it's not true and so I like to paint this story, dude. In the glory days, pre-internet, right? Yeah. To find a realtor, you had to drive around and either go to their office when they had no solicitations and they kick you in the face and tell you to leave, or you had to go yeah. to their open houses or a broker preview and just cold walk in or cold call them. That's the, that, the only way to get in front of these people. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people understand that game though. That's how they built their business. That's how they built their career. So they understand like, I know what that means to go into a realtor's office and ask for an appointment. So when I ask them, did you get a deal the first time you met the agent? And they're like, oh God, no. Like the agent like ignored me and like, like told me to leave. Yeah. Like I didn't get a deal. And I'm like, good. When did you get a deal? And they're like, I don't know, like my 50th meeting. Like I had to, yeah. I call, kept calling them and I kept seeing them and I kept going to networking events. And I think it took, you know, 42 meetings to like yeah. get like an actual opportunity. And I'm like, good. So you understand that? They're like, yes. I'm like, so why do you think one video is going to magically make you go viral and get you business, you <laughs> stupid person. Yeah. yeah. Dude. That's awesome. And so like, this is, this is the, this is what people have to hold in both hands. And it's very hard. Yeah. It's very hard. They have to hold in their hand that the video they post today is effectively individually irrelevant. Like no one, the internet's not stopping. The world's not shutting down. You know, like yeah. someone's even watching this podcast, right? Like so the, it's not going to stop because you and I are on a podcast. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe. But, but when the, one video on DTI or on this deal you saved and how other people shouldn't fall into this trap, that, that doesn't yeah. shut the internet down and everyone pays attention. So yeah. that single video really is irrelevant. But at the same time, it's so important that you consistently show up over and over again with your message and with your passion and with your with your with your story yeah. because over and over again those micro impressions over here become the thing that build your brand become the building blocks of who you are as a professional and that when people get that i feel like they they wake up and they're like oh shit i get it like i i, I need to yeah. i need to i need to really seriously play now because every single video and mic is a micro impression that means the world in the long term so you, you mentioned a couple of things and I just want to break them down real quick. So the first one was that gorilla top tech marketing, talking to a real estate agent in real life. And I talk about, and I preach it, like treat social media, like a conversation, like you would in real life. And then I forget 
myself until you just reminded me like, no, like in real life, you meet people multiple times before they do a deal with you until they feel trusted. And here I am like trying to send video messages. It's just funny guys. Cause like I've been doing video content for four years, but like there's always things to prove upon. Um, yeah. So always be learning. And you mentioned another thing people forget right away. Um, if you ask me what I remember, if I remember anything I saw, let me ask you, do you remember anything you saw yesterday on social? Like, oh, like God, you no. no way, but you probably oh, commented on five posts, but I have no idea. <laughs> like, so I, I want to get back to like, uh, virality. Like people are trying to go viral. Um, what, what do you say to that? Cause I have an opinion, but I want to hear yours. People that want to go viral and that's what all they're shooting for. It's so stupid, dude. It's so dumb. It's the same people that are obsessed with vanity metrics, yeah. like likes and all the bullshit and like how many followers you have. It doesn't matter. You could have a hundred thousand followers in Bangladesh and you'll never do a loan for them in the United States. Like you are, it's so dumb. I'd rather have a hundred of my past customers on yeah. my social media connection than, than go viral. I, I mean, I'm laughing at like, so I love TikTok. It's a great platform. Yeah. It's got great things. Yeah. But people are always like, how often should I be on TikTok? And I go, well, how many state licenses do you have? And they're like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, if, if, you, if you hit TikTok right and you go and you get, and you get attention and, and you go semi-viral or you, you have your dream and you go viral, yeah. How many people can you serve in Florida when you live in California and you don't have a Florida license yet? Right. Like you're going so broad. And and by the way, is that a good problem to have? Sure. Can you go get your Florida license? Absolutely. I mean, yes, there's, yeah. but my whole point is like, you're missing, you're chasing the wrong thing. Yeah. You want the people that you care about, your past customers, your realtors, your community around you, you want them to be your base and your foundation and, and your community. And then as you build from there and you spread out to their friends and their friends, great. But like, just to start getting on, on TikTok and dancing, you're missing the whole point. Yeah, I, so you talked about growing your community and I'm just gonna, this is the last time I'm gonna say it because you guys are probably annoyed. Build your community in person. Like if you're trying to build your community, it's not, think about it. You're not going to an event trying to talk to it every person there, let's say there's a thousand person at the event, there's just no way you can talk to all of them and have an effective conversation. Like that's impossible. There's no way you can get to know them. There's no way you would even remember their name. But you think about it on social too, you're trying to grow this community online. And when you try to go after everybody, you don't have those relationships like you would in person, right? Am I wrong there? 100%. It's, it's, it's just wild. It's so wild. Like how much is this clicking talking is probably one of my favorite episodes. Actually, my assistant, I'm gonna, she's gonna blush, guys. Everybody that's listening, she said, This guy is really good. So <laughs> I appreciate you, Alec. <laughs> the conversation. She's never said that before. So that's awesome. Um, I think I mean I got a lot of questions answered that I had that I was ready for this episode. Is there anything, Alec, that you want to cover um before we 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 head out? Yeah, I just want to encourage people um in this in this whole medium. You know, you have to remember if you're brand new to mortgage, then you got to hear this too. But if you're an old dog like me, um, if you're not uncomfortable, you're probably not winning or you're probably not putting yourself in a position to win. And so we forget how uncomfortable we were when we cold called agents and walked into open houses and they didn't know who we were. And, and they, I mean, now they have phones, but I literally had people like lift up magazines to like hide their face when I'd walk into open houses and I'd be like, oh God, like that. You know, you just, we forgot how uncomfortable and how hard it was to push through that to get relationships built and, and, and move on. But when we tap into that memory, we realize that it's the same stuff. It's just in a different place. I, I say this, this, this line all the time, the game didn't change. Just the place we're playing it changed. Yes. And so the relationship game never changed. People work with who they like and they know and they trust. But now that the internet is a dominant place everyone's playing in, we get the opportunity to show up there and, and we have to figure out how to do it. And it makes us very uncomfortable because now I got to stare at this little camera thing. And what if I say something and it's dumb and, and, and all the things that hold us back, all the insecurities and fears are right there waiting for us. And the second we realize that none of it really matters and we break through, we can, we can tap into the power of this place and you can see people doing it. It's inspirational. It's amazing as people like explode onto the scene. Um, but, but it's going to cost you and you're going to be uncomfortable. And yeah. my biggest encouragement is that's, that's 
awesome. You should, you should be knowing you're doing the right thing. The second thing I want everyone to hear, Devin, which I said before, but I'll say it again, is be, you have to be yourself. If you are very analytical and you prefer to go down every single line item of a closing disclosure with a customer, then you know what your content needs to be about? Exactly the stuff that you think the other loan officers aren't doing, and that's why you do it. Because I guarantee I get in my head of, of one of these people. They're like, hey, these slick salespeople and mortgage, they don't explain anything. They don't slow down. They don't show the customer all the details. And that's what I do, and that's what makes me great. Well, put out content like that. Put out content yeah. that says, your loan officer is probably not doing this with you, so let me do it for you now. And all of a sudden, that concept of there's an audience for everyone can really open somebody's mind up to, well, yeah, that means you too. Well, however you think and, and, and vibe. And then the last piece is just don't forget to show your humanity. Don't forget to showcase who you are, what you like, what you care about, the charities you're involved in, your dog, whatever it is. Um, you don't need to show your intimate family fights and BS, but you should sh you should show people what makes you tick uh, because all of a sudden you'll find a whole bunch of humans that like that and vibe with that. And that's who you want to work with anyway. Man, I appreciate that. And before we end, there actually is one thing because it, it brought a thought up to my mind. You said th things have changed. I don't mean to scare you guys, but the metaverse is coming and there's going to be a different change, right? Like you're going to have to literally engage with people virtually in the future. Like there might be other things that come out, but what I'm saying is like, it's not always going to be the same. And you said, be, uncom be comfortable being uncomfortable because like, it's not always, it may not be video content in 10 years. It might be the metaverse, man. Who knows? Who knows? You know, it's, it's just crazy. It's hundred percent, bro. Oh, it's awesome. Okay. Um, it, your Instagram handle, it's Alec the Hanson, right? Is that all your yes. social? Mickey, can we yes. throw it? Thank you. So please follow Alec on Facebook at Alec A. Hanson and then Instagram, Alec the Hanson. And then his YouTube channel is just search Alec Hanson. It's pretty easy to find. He's got a lot of videos, yes. so you should be able to search it. <laughs> um, but thanks, Alec. I really appreciate it. This has been probably like one of my favorite episodes. appreciate you hopping on because I know you're busy. Rock guy. on, dude. Thank you very okay, much for having me. See ya. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Storytime Podcast. Be sure to catch us next time to stay up to date with all the latest on content creation and social media. Also, subscribe to our trend reports at story.co slash trend reports to get the latest trends in your inbox. We'll see you next time. Storytime Podcast.